a late April snowstorm dumped more than a foot of snow in some areas of Kansas and spread up to 10 inches in certain parts of Nebraska. With the reporting cutoff of Sunday, the condition of the U.S. winter wheat crop was unchanged from a previous week, but issues may appear in Monday's next USDA progress report. In Nebraska, 34 percent of the 2017 corn crop had been planted, with 3 percent listed as emerged. On Thursday, Nebraska Extension's Justin McMicken joined us to describe how growers can assess the shape of corn put in the ground before the cold, wet weather moved in. But we started by asking what would happen to any corn under snow. Snowfall is a new one for us, and you know we did some searching through the literature, and we haven't found a lot on impacts of snow on uh, newly emerged or emerging corn. Uh, so. We're going to reflect back a little bit on temperatures and what we know about temperature. And, and when I think of snowfall on corn, I think it's a buffer against atmospheric temperatures uh, to prevent above ground freezing. But then it's also going to melt and uh, potentially move into where that seed is germinating. And so that's a bit of a concern because it'll lower the temperature around that seed. And in particular, we're worried about corn that was planted maybe just 24 to 48 hours before this, this hit. Uh, because that corn could potentially, um, once it starts imbibing water, it'll start expanding. And uh, if it's too cold, it's not elastic. And so essentially that seed breaks open and we lose our germination. And so that's a, a big concern. And what I would warn growers, I guess, now is to, to just kind of leave those fields, set them aside and continue planting if they still have planting to go before they start evaluating. If there are any concerns with frost issues, and, and I think it would have to be small pockets of the state, what would growers look for there? Yeah, yeah I took a look at temperatures and you know, our, our indication is that we probably didn't hit a lot, but there are probably, like you said, a few pockets that could have some, some uh, frost damage. And, and uh, you know, a lot of that can look bad initially, especially if you've got V2 stage corn, which is probably some of the most advanced corn we had. Um, that dead tissue, uh, when it starts to regrow, it's going to be in the way of the newly emerging tissue. Uh, so essentially what we can get is, is uh, wrapping of those leaves or tying up of those leaves and uh, lots of growers get concerned and, and uh, would like to cut that tissue off uh, and we advise against that. There's been a lot of studies, uh, Roger Elmore here at the university uh, did some in, in the late 1980s and essentially what we get is uh, uh, an issue where when you cut that off, first of all you can push pathogens across the field and, and essentially spread them across the field but then also um, it, we just don't get a good yield response. So be patient. Uh, most of the data indicates that if you don't cut them, they, they seem to do fairly well. Perhaps the more widespread problem would be growers who planted before that cold, wet weather moved in. Mm -hmm. What should they look for? Yeah, you know, depending on what stage or, you know, right before you planted uh, and what stage that crop was at when it was hit, it's going to affect how you evaluate. And if you've got emerged corn, I suggest you dig up a few plants and cut them longitudinally. Uh, and basically what you're looking at is that, that underground portion and whether or not it's white. Uh, if it's nice and white, it's a healthy plant. If it's turning a slight brown color, then you're, you're facing some issues. At least that plant seems to be compromised. And so that could be due to, to bacterial pathogens or simply that plant has been killed off by frost. If it's not emerged? If it's not emerged, then we go back to the, the uh, you know, imbibing water and, and that seed expanding and swelling um, even after that. So that's part of the germination process. Um, but those, you're going to look for seeds that really haven't done anything since they've been, they've been germinated. But those that have and have started to develop a small mesocotyl, which is the, the newly part that just emerges out of that seed and is headed towards the surface, uh, cold temperatures can also affect that area. And uh, what we get is what we call a corkscrew where the leaves emerge underground uh, and it's certainly not good and, and most likely a, a fate for the corn that it's not going to produce much. Um, but looking for those types of conditions and whether or not you have an issue um, would be important. So you, you'd be changing your evaluation based on what your corn was at uh, prior to that cold event. How hard is it to decide whether or not you're going to replant? It's tough. Uh, so I'll refer people to an article that was produced in CropWatch uh, that uh, focuses on you know, what is the minimum planting population. Uh, the On-Farm Research Network uh, did a four-year study on kind of what the minimum populations were. And that's going to depend on whether or not you have irrigated ground, uh, your rain fed, and then what your yield potential was. So if you're above 115 bushels uh, per acre, you're going to have a different uh, minimum population uh, that we would recommend. Finally, how concerned are you with disease issues? Uh, concerned because it's been cool and wet since we had these, uh, this initial cold snap and uh, that certainly favors a lot of diseases, Pectobacterium is one. Uh, so when we're evaluating we want to be patient uh, because those don't immediately show up uh, and so I, I really recommend growers take their time uh, to evaluate. The, the key thing is moving forward is uh, when we wait we lose yield in terms of the next planting date and I understand that and that's what growers are thinking about. 
Um, but if this is a crop that's actually going to produce still, it's, uh, you're saving money if you can, you can wait to make that proper evaluation.